Hello chapits, welcome to another Board Games Everybody Should dot dot dot. In this video I'm going to be looking at the game Harold. I'll put a graphic up because that looks very bad there. <laughs> it's a, uh, a light abstract card game for two to four players where you'll be building a village and you'll also be contributing towards a uh, royal court. And at the end of the game, your village is going to be compared with the Royal Court to give you points. And you also have to have a, a very equilibrium village uh, to give you bonus points at the end of the game. This game is really light and easy to learn due to the fact that there's only six different types of card in this game. Although there is quite a big glorious deck of, of cards, so to speak. So I'm going to show you how this game plays. And then afterwards, I'm going to tell you that... This is a board game that everybody should get in the box is a very very small rule book which is very well written and you'll have a score pad for scoring your game and then you'll have your deck of cards and also with the deck of cards in the game you'll have these reference cards as you can see uh, this one's in French but if you flip it over it's in English as well these are the references that you're gonna need because it has this iconography on the cards for the powers of each of the six different types of card. At the beginning of the game, each player will be dealt five cards from the deck. Then the deck will be placed to the side and four cards will be turned over from the top of the deck. This is a, a kind of market where you will replenish your hand at the end of your turn. Then each player will play one card secretly in front of themselves. Let's take that for example and then reveal, and this will be the first card that they place into their village. Then your starting player will choose their first card and then play will begin. Play is very, very simple. You will add one card of whatever card you like into the center of the table. This is the Royal Court, okay? And then you will play one card in front of yourself into your village. This will then activate the power which is marked on the bottom of the card. Now let's go through these cards and show you what they do. Now this is my village I have here. If I was to play a new card into my village, so, so let's play this merchant, the special power that is activated is I can swap any card from my village with a card from any other player's village. So I could, uh, I'm gonna swap this uh, navigator with this scout. There you go. So that's what that power does. Then we have the bard. If I play the bard into my village, I can swap any card from my hand with the card from my village. So I'm going to swap this with another merchant. And this power won't activate. If I was to play the navigator into my village, I can swap a card from my village or another player's village with a card from the Royal Court. So I could technically, I'm gonna take this scout and then put them in into the Royal Court and then take this warrior, which will lead me on to the warrior. If I play the warrior into my village, I can swap any card from my village or another player's village with the draw deck. So I'm gonna be nasty and I'm gonna take uh, this navigator from the other player's village this card will go onto the bottom of the deck and they will have to take the top card. Again, the power does not activate when you activated the power. Next, we have the blacksmith. Okay, his power is you can flip two cards over. Now, flipping a card over means that it doesn't have any power whatsoever. It won't count as scoring at the end of the game. So I could flip a card from my village which might give me some points, or I can swap, a, flip a card from the center of the table in the Royal Court, or I can flip another player's card. So I might do that, and I might do that. 
And last but not least, we have the Scout. Now the Scout has a unique power. Okay, if I was to play this warrior into the royal court here, and then I play this scout in my village, what'll happen is it'll activate the power in of the card that I've placed into the royal court. So I will activate the power of the warrior. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, basically, at the end of the game, for each card which is in the royal court, I will score points for. So there's one warrior in the court. Each one of my warrior cards in my village will be worth one point each. So obviously if there were more warriors in the court, so two warriors there and two warriors here, so each one of these were worth two points each, so I'd have four points there. After you've played your two cards into the village and into the royal cart, you will then draw back up to four cards and you would go take them from the market here. Now, you could take one from a face-up card here, and that is instantly replaced, and if you wanted to, you could take another one from the market face-up. Or you could take cards from the face-down pile, and once you have four cards, play passes to the next player. And the game will continue for X amount of rounds. If you're playing a two-player game, you will play 10 rounds each, uh, if you're playing a three-player game, eight rounds, and if you're playing a four-player game, six rounds each. But when you go into the last round, you will do something slightly different. You will not be playing a card into the royal court. You will actually just play one card into your village, and then the scoring commences immediately for your village. You do not score the other players until they've played their last card into the village. So at the moment, I've got two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, seven cards in my village. It's a two player game. I've still got another two rounds to go before the final scoring round. So let me show you how final scoring works. So as we go into the last round, I'm about to add one of my cards to my village and none to the Royal Court. I am going to add this blacksmith to my village, which lets me turn over two cards. So I will turn over two cards. This one would be quite useful for me because it would give me some more points in my village. I could be nasty and actually get rid of one of the blacksmiths here because my opponent has three of them. So each one of those is worth three points each. So I could turn one over and make them two points each. Or I could turn my, I'm gonna do that, I think. And then this navigator here, I could have turned that over to give me an extra point, but I think it's better to give my opponent less points than to give me more points and not many. Okay, we go over to the score sheet. The score sheet has each of the six types of uh, card, and it has a, a royal and special power, a special bonus scoring. Okay, so we'll start with the blacksmith. Now, you will get points for every blacksmith which is in your village in comparison to how many are in the royal court. So we have two blacksmiths in the royal court, which means that each blacksmith in my village is gonna be worth two points. So this would give me two points. Okay, the special power is in the bottom left here, okay? I'll get four points if I have more warriors than blacksmiths. And I only have one. So I don't have more, so I don't get the bonus. If I had several other blacksmiths, okay, and I had a lot more warriors, so let's say I had three warriors here, which means I have more warriors than blacksmiths, I would get four points for this card and four points for this card, which would give me eight in total. But I don't. What a shame. So I get zero points there. Then the warriors. We have two in the council and one in my village, which means that I will get two points for each one of these, which gives me two points. The special power on this one is I will get one point for each bard. I have two bards, so I would get two points for this warrior. If I had more warriors, obviously I would get two plus two plus two plus two. So I would get two points for my special power there. Bards, okay. I have two bards, and there are two in the in the Royal Council, which means that each one of my bards is worth two points, which means I get four points. 
As you can see, I, I tried this earlier on Muck Flow. <laughs> the bonus for the bards is if I have more bards than merchants. And again, I do not. I have three merchants. Blurry cam. And I have two bards. If I did, I would have got four points for each one. So a zero again. Merchants. I have three merchants in my village. And I don't have any in the council, which makes that totally zero, zero, zero. The bonus for the merchants are, I would get one point for each navigator that I have. I have two navigators, so this one gets two points, this one gets two points, and this one gets two points, so I get six points from the merchants. Next we have the navigators. I have two navigators and one in the royal court, which means I get two points. And then the special power for the navigator is I would get four point extra if I have the same amount of um, navigators as I do scouts. And I don't have any scouts whatsoever, so I don't get any bonus whatsoever either. Scouts. Well, I don't have any scouts in my village, but let's have a look. So I get zero points. A scout is worth two points for every face down card in your village. So if I had a scout, I would have got two points because I got one face down card, but I haven't. And then you total up your score and then whatever your score is. So eight, uh, 12, 14, 16, 18, I've got 18, which is terrible score. Normally you get around about thirties or forties. Okay, and then play would pass to the next player and they would pass the, play their last card and then do their scoring and then the next player and so on and so on. And that's when you decide who the winner's gonna be. Well, you don't decide who the winner's gonna be. The game tells you who the winner's gonna be. <laughs> so to sum up, Harold is a board game that everybody who likes strategic in your face abstract games will love. This game is very, very simple to teach but extremely difficult to master. This is a real kind of brain blower. Now let's start from the beginning. The components are really, really good. The artwork is gorgeous. Um, it, it's phenomenal. Um, the quality of the cards is very good as well. The rule book is written extremely well as well. This one is in English and French. Um, and it, it, it just it just works. Um, there are some variants that are mentioned in the rules. One variant is if you're playing a four-player game, you can actually do two teams, and then you add up your, your two villages together at the end of the game. There's also a variant where you remove the prestige points. Now, I should have said that at the beginning. Prestige points. There's your, your, your scoring for um, what cards you have in your village and what cards are in the royal court. And then you have those prestige points, which are the bonus on the bottom of the cards. You can play without that scoring system, so you just score for what you have. Um, so that's the components and the rules. It is, this game is really simple. You're playing two cards and you're drawing, but it's this very delicate balancing act that you have to do with your village and the royal court, and then inside your village itself, because those prestige points can really win you the game or lose you the game. It doesn't matter about the, the Royal Court. It's those prestige points which we'll, we'll gain. But the thing is, it, this game has this take that element where you're, you're taking cards from other people's villages and getting rid of them or putting them into the council or putting them into your village. And it, it's this back and forth and you're, you're trying to balance what you're trying to do with what everyone else is trying to do with the Royal Court's trying to do. And it's, it's just a real mind blower of a game. It's so simple, it plays really quickly. You know, you're looking at about 20 to 40 minutes um, because the rounds never last that long unless you have someone who's gonna sit there and think for a while. I like playing the game as a two player if I have an opponent who knows the game and, and knows and having this back and forth. So you may enjoy this solely as a two player game bang 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 I'm gonna do this to you you're gonna do this to me and see who wins but you may enjoy it as a group as a four-player game where it's just total chaos 
Um, the court is always changing, your village is changing. Um, there are those moments where you may get ganged up on. Um, you know, this player would attack you and take away a good card from you because you have like three or four of them and there's also a couple in the, in the Royal Court. And then this player would do the same, maybe flip some over and he's like, oh, no, leave me alone. But the game is a nice kind of brain burner. It's quick, it's simple, but as I said, it's very difficult to, to judge what's the best strategic approach. Is it best just to concentrate on your village? Is it best just to attack all the other players? Is it best to concentrate on, is it, you know, getting this very delicate balance of everything in the game to a T. And that's what I love about this game. It is really, for me, it's a real nice kind of, gives me that splendor feel. Once I've played it with a couple of people, we want to play it again, and this time we're gonna crush you. I don't know how you won last time, but you know, this time we're gonna crush you. It, that's that feeling that I really enjoy from a game like Space Invaders, you know, oh, I only got 400 points, next time I'm going to get 500 points. The scoring is low, um, I'm not really keen on games with score pads, but be it as it may, sorry, I had to nick that one. Um, it, it's enjoyable, it's simple, It's it just flows really, really nicely, um, and I can't say anything else nice about this game. It's not going to be for everybody because it is abstract, because it is a bit take that. Um, and uh, it, it, for some people, you look at this and you think, wow, it's just six cards. It's not Pokemon. No, no, it's not Pokemon. But it has this replayability, unlike Pokemon, where replayability for there is the different types of cards, whereas this is how you integrate with the other opponents and that's where the replayability comes so um a really good really solid game i'm probably going on a lot longer than what i should do for a small small compact card game which is abstract and it is really good fun but um only if you like those kind of parameters so let me finish off, as I always say, you don't have to buy every single game out there, just own some good ones. And I hope that videos like this will help you choose those good ones for yourself. So until next time, take it easy. Hey, you, do you like playing board games? Yeah, yeah, we well, you know what? So do I. So let me tell you a little story. Long, 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 long time ago, before XCOM and Techno Go, there was a game, was a game, was a game called the Settlers of Catan. I think you know the game gives me nightmares in my sleep. The thing that I remember is a beep, beep, beep. When someone rolls a seven and summons up the thief, they pick on me. That's why I don't like Baker Tess Cause that's just the way that